Today is section 2.1 on limits. So we're going to look at some basic limits and how to solve them. On number one, the first thing you want to do when you're looking at limits is just simply try to plug the number in, the value in. We have the limit as x approaches 5 of x squared plus 4. There are no issues with plugging 5 in. For example, over here, if I plug negative 1 into the denominator, we get 0 in the denominator. That's bad. Well, we don't have that over here. We can just plug 5 in. So we get 5 squared plus 4. Now when you plug the 5 in, we don't write the limit anymore. We are actually performing the limit operation right now. So we have 25 plus 4, and the answer to this problem is simply 29. In number 2, like we said before, if we plug negative 1 in the denominator, we get 0, and that is bad. So somehow we have to eliminate the fact that we have 0 in the denominator. And this uh, problem requires factoring. So we have 2x and x, we can factor the numerator, and we have minus 3 and plus 1 here, and that is still over x plus 1. We have the limit as x approaches negative 1. Well, the x plus 1's will cancel out. We have the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 2x minus 3. And notice that each step, we write the limit statement. Well, now we can actually plug negative 1 without any issues, with no problems in the denominator whatsoever. So we have 2 times negative 1 minus 3. I don't write the limit statement because we're performing the limit operation now. And we have negative 2 minus 3, and the answer is negative 5. In number 3, if we plug 0 into this big denominator here, we, we get 0 in the denominator, of course. So we're going to have to eliminate this problem. And we do that by multiplying everybody by the little denominators. We have c plus 4 here and we have a 4 there. So we have to multiply everybody by c plus 4 and 4. So we have the limit as c approaches 0 of, uh, well the c plus 4's will cancel out leaving 4. On this fraction right here the 4's will cancel out leaving c plus 4 but we have a minus c plus 4, that minus right there, all over in the denominator, nothing cancels out. So we have 4c and c plus 4. There's no fraction in the denominator, it's just c. So we have, now we have the limit as c approaches 0 of, so we have 4 minus 4, that cancels out. So we have negative c over 4c times c plus 4. Now the c's will cancel out, leaving the limit as c approaches 0 of negative 1 over 4 times c plus 4. And now there's no issue with plugging 0 in the denominator. We have negative 1 over 4 times 0 plus 4 is 4, so the answer is negative 1 16th. On number 4, we have the limit as x approaches 0 of 4 plus x over x. Well, if we plug 0 into the denominator, it stays 0, that's bad, then there's just no way on here to cancel out this denominator so that we don't have zero in the denominator. We can't cancel these because of addition. Uh, there's one technique we might explore, limit as x approaches zero. I call it reverse common denominator. We could put four over x plus x over x, and these would cancel out, but that to, and it would leave one, but that doesn't uh, resolve the fact that zero is, would still be in the denominator. So this limit does not exist. And number six, if we plug zero into everybody, we will have zero in the denominator. That's an issue. Uh, the one thing we can do with this is expand this three plus x to the third. So let's do that kind of off to the side here. We have three, three plus x's that we have to multiply out. So if I take these two, I have nine plus six x plus x squared and we need to multiply that times 3 plus x. So I'll distribute the 3 through this, so we have 27 plus 18x plus 3x squared, and now I'll run the x through, I'll distribute the x through, we have 9x plus 6x squared plus x to the third, and if we combine the like terms, we get, uh, well let's bring down the limit now, limit as x approaches 0 of 27 plus 27 x plus 9x squared plus x to the third, that's this piece right here, and now we need the minus 27, 
and that is all over x. There's the x in the denominator. That's equal to the limit as x approaches 0. There should be an arrow. Well, 27 minus 27 is going to cancel out, and we're left with 27x plus 9x squared plus x to the third all over x. Well, now everybody has an x, so what I could do is factor an x out of the top and cancel that with the x in the bottom. So what we end up with is the limit as x approaches 0 of 27 plus 9x plus x squared. Now we can plug 0 in without any issues. The denominator is gone. So we have that is just going to be equal to 27 because these two will go to 0. We have a very important limit. We have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x and it is equal to 1. If we graph this function, it goes up to 1. Like kind of like that and if you want to know what happens it oscillates here or it goes up and down but it starts approaching zero also as we go to infinity and negative infinity so that's what the graph of this looks like there will be a hole right there at zero but the limit is still one it's still approaching the, the, the equation or the graph is approaching one on both sides now, even, there's there, even though there's a hole at zero the limit is actually one so you need to memorize this. Memorize the fact that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is equal to the value of 1. Now here's how we're going to use this. We want to find the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent x over x. And we can't just plug 0 in. That's what we should always try when we're doing limits is can we just plug the value in. In this case we can't because we'll have 0 in the denominator. This is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over cosine of x over x. That is the same as tangent. Well, we can multiply the top and the bottom by cosine of x. So we have the limit as x approaches 0 of now. These will cancel out and we'll have sine of x over x cosine x. Well, one of the properties of limits says that we can split this using multiplication. So we have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x, that's these two pieces right here, times the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine of x. Well we were just told that this right here is equal to a value of 1. If you look at the graph at 0, uh, the graph is approaching a value of 1 on both sides. So now we can replace all of this with the number 1. And we can actually plug 0 into cosine of x. We'll have 1 over cosine of 0. And the cosine of 0 is 1. So we have 1 times 1 over 1. And all of that equates to a value of 1. Let's look at some graphs. We have negative 1 here, negative 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, keep on going. Let's find out what is the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x. Well, as x approaches negative 1, from the left side it's a value of 2, and from the right side we have a value of 2. So the limit as x approaches negative 1 is 2. But that is not equal to the function value. f of negative 1 is down here where the solid dot is. So the function value at negative 1 is actually negative 1. The limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is a value of, and it's slightly below, but let's call it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's just call it 5, and it's probably like 4.9 or 4.8. Uh, let's just say it's 5 for the sake of argument. The limit as x approaches 3 from the right. So we're approaching from the right. And we've got to get very close, and it's a value of 2. 2. The limit as x approaches 3 from the left. So here's 3. If we approach from the left, we are way up here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're approaching a value of 6. Now it says, it asks, what is the limit as x approaches 3 just in general? 
Well, since the right and the left values do not equal each other, then this does not exist. And finally, we're asked the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x. Well, the function value is 1, and the graph is actually approaching that function value, which is, has a value of just 1. In the last slide, we have a piecewise function. We have 3 minus x when x is less than 2, x when x is equal to 2, and x over 2 when x is greater than 2. So the interesting point that we have is actually at 2, and we have three different values. When x is less than 2, 3 minus 2 is 1. And that's an open dot because it's not equal to that. So we have an open dot. And to the left is this line with the slope of negative 1. So here's the slope of negative 1. And it has a y-intercept of 3. We've plotted that. So let's see. Let's get the line tool out, make a nice line. There's to the left of 2. At 2, we have a value of x. Well, x is 2. So at 2, we have a value of 2, and that'll be a solid dot at 2. When x is greater than 2, uh, we have the function x over 2. Well, 2 over 2 is 1, so we have 1 again. And that's an open dot. It's not equal to. And this slope is 1 half. So from this point, we can go up 1 and over 2, up 1 and over 2, up 1 and over 2. So and, th and that would extend forever, of course. The question is, what is the limit as x approaches 2 from the right? As x approaches 2 from the right, it is approaching a value of 1. It is not approaching the function value, which is 2. So the answer to this question is, it's approaching a value of 1.